Good morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. So this is what we're working on today. It's a Craftsman uh, with a 6.75 series EX Briggs & Stratton engine. And the guy who brought it in says that his son worked on it and that it's never been the same. Yep, I heard that one before. But anyways, he said his son replaced the carburetor with a cheap uh, aftermarket one so I suspect that's the problem so let's go ahead and zoom right into that carburetor so I think I'll remove the top cover here it's just a couple of Phillips head screws that hold it on I've already loosened them and that way you can see the carburetor a little bit easier what is going on here so I can see right away this setup is not right. The throttle plate uh, actuator looks broken. That's where the linkage is supposed to attach to. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here, but let's go ahead and just take all this off of here. I have a bit of a cold today, folks, so sorry if my voice sounds a little goofy. So I have my 5 16 socket, get in there to the air filter, oh yeah. Those bolts there aren't even tight, so that's one thing the kid forgot to do. Let this be a lesson to all you dads out there. Don't let your kid work on your lawnmower unless he knows what he's doing. Okay, so three screws hold that on, and then it just pushes into the breather tube. That's your choke actuator here. He may have screwed it up on the other side, where it, where it uh, actuates with the muffler. I'll have to look inside there and see. So you need a quarter inch for that. So normally you can just remove this. Boy, that wasn't even tight either. Hope you didn't strip that. That doesn't matter. We're replacing this carburetor. So usually you can just take this out and let this sit. And uh, it'll stay in place on the other side here. I can see we're missing a spring on that. On your choke mechanism there. We're missing a spring. All right, once you get this far, you can go ahead and uh, take your fuel line off. You'll want to drain your gas tank. So make sure to clean out your gas tank, always. Since my pump's not working, I'm going to drain the gas tank another way. But for now, I'm just going to take the carburetor off. Take off your hose clamp. There's your hose clamp. Give the fuel line a little twist. Yeah, look at the linkage. It's going... Where is it going? It's not attached to anything. Yikes. We're not going to use this carburetor anyways. It's an aftermarket carburetor. Piece of crap. I'm not even going to take my chances with it. All right. So you have your little gasket here that goes on the manifold. The manifold's not broken. Everything's still tight. All right. Let's finish draining this gas tank. It's about 45 degrees out here. Looks like we're back to winter. We had about a uh, 25 minute spring. Now we're back to winter here in the Pacific Northwest. 
You gotta like rain if you live out here, that's for sure. All right, I'm gonna continue to let this drain and completely dry out the fuel tank. Um, and I'll blow some air in there to make sure to, to get everything out because there's always sediment left in there once it dries. All right, so this is the auto choke uh, style carburetor. And this is the part number through Briggs and Stratton for that. This sat out in the rain last night, that's why it looks like that. And here's a brand new fancy dancy Briggs and Stratton auto stoke auto choke style carburetor. Only buy genuine Briggs and Stratton products. So here's the aftermarket carburetor. You can see the part that's broken right there on top. It's supposed to have a linkage hole there. This one's missing. The kid probably broke it putting, on, putting it on and then just hoped for the best after that. So before I put this carburetor on, I'm going to look, see if I can look in here and see if um, this arm is still in the correct position. Otherwise, we might have to take off the gas tank in this cover to see if it's still attached over here. Well, unfortunately here, I don't think this arm is attached on the other side to the muffler where it needs to be anymore. So we're going to have to take off the gas tank and this engine cover. So this is my 5 16 socket. You have three bolts up here to get the tank out of the way. Usually you can just rotate, don't lose these screws, or let them fall down through here. That wouldn't be good. So yeah, you can just usually tilt the gas tank back. And then you want to make sure to remove this other one here on the oil dipstick spout. And then what I do is I just lift this up a little bit and turn it out of the way. And now it's back to the 3 8 socket you have one here one here on the other side and then you will have two in front usually so it's not too bad to remove if you know what you're doing so now this will just lift off of here but sometimes this little bracket gets in the way so you just bend it forward a little bit all right, now you can see what it looks like here. Okay, so this is what this setup looks like. I can just move that out of the way for now. You have this little actuator, which works against this and operates your choke. Now the choke will be all, the choke when it's cold will always be in the on position, but once the engine heats up. This little thing moves and opens the choked heat operated, believe it or not. Since I'm here, I'm just going to put a wrench, half inch socket on these head bolts. Make sure none of them have loosened up. The, this is the one that usually loosens up, but it feels like it's still pretty tight. You don't want to over tighten it, but I usually just put a wrench on it to see if it has loosened up at all. So let's go ahead and put this new carburetor on while we have the engine cover off. So there's the linkage hole right there. And you take your linkage, put it on like so, and you mount it back up. Oh, the sun's coming out. That's nice. Been raining for a week. So just make don't forget your, your O ring on there. And you'll want to tighten these bolt bolt and you'll want to tighten these bolts up evenly on both sides so nothing gets bent out of shape.
Okay. So this guy goes like this on here. And this little pin here, of course, goes into the choke bracket. The choke actuator. So this bolt here is very easy to over tighten and if you do, you're screwed. So don't over tighten it. But make sure it's snug. I just use this, I, that way I don't over tighten it too much. All right, and you can see this swings freely on here. And that is because there's no spring. The spring attaches to this little tab here and then to here. So the spring we need now attaches to there and there. So we gotta make sure to find that spring I don't know if I have any in the junkyard. I'll probably have to buy one. And this is what this area is supposed to look like. You can see the, the linkage can move freely now. And you have that little eyelet there that the spring goes into. And then it goes into this other little eyelet here. Which this eyelet here, you can bend it either way to make the engine rev up more or not rev up as much. And this is your throttle control. So you can see when you go to this position, it makes the spring tighter, which pulls the throttle wide open. So that's your high speed position. And that would be your slow speed position. And you can usually reuse the O-ring gasket uh, that goes on the intake here. Those things last a long time. Unless it's completely cracked and broken, I rarely replace them. Well, since we have everything torn apart down to here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and set the gap on the coil, just because. 0.012 inches, or 0.305 millimeters. This is the feeler gauge you want. A little tight. Loosen this up, loosen this one up a little bit. Sometimes I'll just use a little pry bar to pry the coil out a little bit. So I think I'm just gonna stick that in there like that. It's halfway cinch it down because I still wanna be able to do the other side. Slide it through. Cinch it down. Now be very careful. You can break these bolts very easily. So I just use my wrist strength to tighten those. All right, that's how you gap mat 12. Because you want the feeler gauge to feel a little resistance when coming out of there. Remember, do not over tighten. So I think I can go ahead and put this back on. I have the spring on order for the choke. They actually call it a uh, air vane spring. And I think we'll be able to get to that bracket from over here. Remember this little bracket here will hang me up. There we go. All right, yeah, we can reach this stuff. And 
we'll put these bolts back into place. Those people next door listen to country devil music. All right, everybody, it's been a couple of days, and I finally received the spring, and that's the part number there. And it's just a teeny tiny little dude. And see, there it is, a little tiny guy. This is probably the most common spring that gets lost on lawn mowers. I always see him gone. But anyways, you could see that tab there is where we hook one end. And then on the, uh, <clears throat> the lever here, the auto choke lever, we also have a little hook right there. Let's see if I can do this without a pair of pliers. Got to have some pretty tiny hands. And I don't have tiny hands, so I'm going to use some pliers here. Hook one end there. And hook the other end right there. Folks, see how it returns now? We are back in action. So I'm going to put this cover back on. Oops. And these are just screws that go into plastic holes so you can strip them out. So basically just snug them up. So I guess it's time to put the air filter assembly back on. You have this gasket here which goes on the back just like that and you make sure that uh, that little tube goes into your breather hose just like that put your three cover screws back in And I know I say it a lot, but these screws uh, are pretty easy to over tighten and you can strip things out on the carburetor. So you tighten down these two first. Oops. nice and snug to squish that gasket all tight And a new air filter. And we are done. Ready to test this baby out. And there we are. Let's see what happens. Put this guy right about in the middle. That's the throttle adjustment.
so you can hear on full speed, it's not quite revving up as much as it should. So this is what we do to fix that. See that little loop right there? Your throttle linkage is actually attached to it. And what you want to do is just bend it ever so slightly out this way. That makes the spring tighter. And uh, now it'll rev up more. So if you bought an aftermarket carburetor for your Briggs & Stratton engine, uh, there is a quick fix if it's not working right, and I'll show you that right now. So basically what you do, is you set it right there, and uh, you take the biggest sledgehammer you can find. This one's a 10-pound sledge, and uh, this is the best way to fix them. But sometimes that doesn't work, so you have to take another good swing at it. And once you do that, um, you go ahead and order yourself a Briggs & Stratton manufactured carburetor. And put it on instead of this one. This concludes your lesson for the day on how to fix a aftermarket Briggs & Stratton carburetor. Have a nice day, folks.